Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we're here in Gardening Zone 6B in New England. It is approximately three and a half weeks until our last frost estimated date. And so, y'all, it's time to put in the peas. Um, I got a lot of stuff going on here. I have some space set up for my peas already, so here's what we got. Um, gonna put in some Wando peas, and I'm definitely gonna put in these Spring Blush peas. But, and then I have a whole bunch of peas left over from last year. These King Tut purple peas, they have the most beautiful blooms. Um, they're these pinkish purple blooms and they're just stunning. Uh, and then let's see what else have we got. I've got some Lillian's caseload left over from last year. Sugar Daddy peas from last year. Ooh, Tall Telephone peas and the Kelvadon Wonder. We planted these both last year. I really loved the results so we're going to put the rest of them in this year. I have currently uh, three trellises set up they're cattle panel trellises done wide on the, the horizontal. And I've, I've got three long spaces set up for them. So I'm really excited to put stuff in. It's where I put the tomatoes last year, but we're putting the tomatoes someplace else this year. So yay. Something else that I'm really excited about this year is I have uh, sunflower seeds from last year and the remains of a couple of sunflower seed packets from years before. I wanna put these by the chicken coop. I wanna direct sow them along the run. This will give the chickens some shade while we're in the height of summer. And then kale, not for me, strictly for the chickens. Also wanna plant in there with the sunflowers. So come on along, let's go get some stuff into the ground. Good morning, ma'ams. All I'm going to do is walk along the edge of the run, make little holes with my dibbler, and pop these guys in. I have so many fun things. I'm also going to put in some kale direct sown in there. And um, I've got chocolate sunflowers. And I've got some giant sunflowers from last year. So the sunflowers, I just put them in willy-nilly. Um, we'll see what happens with them. The peas, we're gonna go over to the, do the peas now and I'll be a little more careful with those. These folks are just chilling out. You're gonna, you're gonna watch me plant? Will you cheer me on from afar? Will you root for me? So if you remember the last year, we use this spot for tomatoes. We're gonna to put the tomatoes on the side of the house this year because um, I think they're just gonna get better sun. So I'm gonna use this space for our peas. So all over what we put down was goat hut clean out and coop clean out. Um, so this stuff's been soaking in really well. It's a nice, it's a super nice thick mulch. And look at this delicious dark soil underneath and that's what I'm going to be planting the peas in and I'm going to plant on both sides of the trellis all right so getting ready to plant peas I've got my dibbler I've got my dibbler I've got my seeds um I have raked this out behind me and I just I have got to show you something look at this mycorrhizal content in the soil I am so so, so super excited about this. So when the peas start coming up, it's really hard to tell what varieties you've got unless they're distinct, like the King Tut purple peas. 
purple. Um, <laughs> so what I want to do this year is I'm going to take the sweet ones, the sugar peas, and I'm going to plant them along this trellis. And the other trellises will just do the regular shelling peas. So I'm going to do a really simple prep for this. I'm going to put a hole every two or three inches. And I'm just going to pop my pea in. I'm going to plant them about a quarter inch to a half inch deep and just tuck them in these holes. I'm going to leave about three, four inches between them. And on the other side, I will do in between those three, four inches. So there's the peas. Um, it is rapidly getting really, really hot out here. I think I'm gonna retreat inside um, and possibly come out after it's, when it starts to be twilighty. See if I can come out then and get some stuff done. In a fit of peak, I might have torn down all the wallpaper upstairs because it's freaking time. Ages ago, we bought uh, paint to do this room, or, well, to do the hallway and the staircase. Might not remember what colors they are. Okay, downstairs in the basement, I've got the paint for this. Tore the stuff off, it came off relatively easy. I was just thrilled. Um, in big sheets, like you like it. The next job up here is going to be uh, to wash it and to spackle it. We're working with just hot water, um, no soap or any of that business. We shouldn't need it. I've got my sponge. I've got my rag and I'm gonna go through and just sponge it down and follow it with the rag. What I'm really aiming for here is to get the residual glue off these walls. Anything that's sandy, loose business, dust, um, hunks of plaster. There are, there's still a few hooks in the walls that I need to take out and then there will be holes to spackle. I have never actually spackled before, so Bill is going to teach me how to do that. For the most part, this stuff came down really, really easily, which I am super grateful for. It's that vinyl facing stuff that they used to use. Uh, but here and there I have a, oh, I keep running into like little scraps that I can just pull off with my fingernails once they're damp. While I'm doing this, I'm trying really hard to be very gentle on stuff like this where there's wallboard tape over it because I don't want to dislodge that and then have a huge mess that I've got to go back and smooth out. So I'm going to keep doing this um, and I'll meet you back here for spackling. Light! There are a few of those that I just couldn't get. That's fine. Gross. What is it? It's all-purpose joint compound. Yay! This is not high-end professional. This is what I do. Some professional drywaller will have a fit over this. But for small holes like these, just a little schmear and drag across, hole gone. Okay. Okay, I can do that. Depending on what you, how big the hole is, you can do a little piece of wood or a little piece of dowel or some patching mesh and then skim over it mm -hmm. for something like this i'll just dust some paper in there okay it just saves you having to stuff all the way into the wall with the joint compound it gives you a surface to skim coat over oh. and then once it dries it's solid okay then
months mm -hmm. when they redid this at some point. The walls really didn't line up well. Uh huh. So it, instead of being a nice straight crisp corner, it kind of wobbles in and out and it's got dips and valleys and peaks and all this and it's mm -hmm. hard to get it to get it to look smooth and I'm not trying to get it perfect but I'm trying to fill in all the little get dips and valleys and holes so that when we sand and paint it'll look a lot it'll look a lot nicer it won't look so jagged sanding has begun now, I can't really do this because, oh my God, I made absolutely made myself queasy with the sensory application yesterday. Um, I, can, I can taste this stuff. You are a ghost. You are but a pale ghost of yourself. What do you think of this color? It's nice. It's gonna make the hallway a lot lighter. I had a different color in mind when we bought this, but you know what? What? It's Americana Blue. It's the same color as Song's Eggs. It's not actually called Americana Blue. I made that up. Long Egg Blue. As opposed to Robin Blue. I like it. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to reach that bit up there, but I'll do what I can, man. I will forewarn you, I may just roll it this out tonight <laughs> and just get it done. I can help you if you want. Okay. Do we have enough rollers? Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. It looks so good, Bill. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. The hall is blue. Mm-hmm. Not that. That is... That's wallpaper. That's next. I love you. You did a beautiful job. Thank you. I love you too. A thing that happens with us sometimes. <laughs> the thing that happens with us sometimes is we can't film because we sit in weird ways. This is a 420 friendly household and we are approaching bedtime, my friend. I'm ready for bed. Yeah, right? Anyway, this thing happens habitually. Bill edges everything in and I'm like, I'm going to roller it. And then he gets to the end of the edging it in, and he's like, uh, I'm just going to roller it real quick. And he does that. I haven't painted anything in a long time. That's okay. Thank you. You're welcome. It's blue now. That's so good. It's Americana blue. It's song egg blue. It's song egg blue. Thanks for hanging out with us through this weird and woolly week um, of getting some stuff in the ground. Tomorrow I'll start filming probably the first of the garden videos. Ooh. Yeah, garden tour. Yay! And we will catch you up soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm. I don't know where